Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I asked for 30 seconds. Do I, I, do I not get that? No. You should be honored that I respected that request only because you ended it with please. Otherwise, I would have just done it anyways. Um, you know, you got to keep the ball's got to keep rolling. Wow. <laughs> Uh, where would we be without humor and a stream deck so here we are uh something we didn't talk about yesterday which is hilarious only because it lives up to all the hopes and dreams that apple could ever establish for us you know they, they are they are the kings of taking away things we might actually like uh the fact that the latest rumor on the street is that they're going to be taking the power brick out of the iphone 12 box oh now, oh, oh yeah 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 now i'm going to spend a thousand dollars on a phone and then I'm going to have to, you know, BYOB, bring my own brick. Is that what? So you didn't get a an iPhone 11 something, right? You don't have right, one I'm, I'm at the 10s. Yeah. So one thing that changed, I don't know if it was just the Max, but it actually comes with a bigger power supply. So it doesn't have that little, mm -hmm. you know, the little tiny square thing. And obviously it's for faster, better charging, yeah. whatever. And Apple sells a variety of actually you can buy like the iPad charger, which is probably USB C, but you get a USB C to lightning cable and you can do that with for fast charging. So it's kind of confusing. I think for an iPhone, especially the coming gen, you'll probably have a choice of mm -hmm. four power supplies you could use, power bricks. Yeah. Prices ranging probably from twenty five to eighty bucks or something. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I understand the logic behind this is that most people have these things just lying around. They're just whatever. You can you can grab a basic yeah. wall wart yeah. and plug it in, and it's fine. Um, there's also the other optimistic side, if you want, and probably how Apple is going to approach it. Like, look, you've already got these things. We're going to save some waste from going into, um, the, you know, the landfills. But I will point out one thing, Paul, and before anybody email, emails me, this is an absolute joke. Do not take yep. this serious. <laughs> um, all I want to point out, Paul. All I want to point out is we got rid of the plastic straws and we got COVID. I, okay. <laughs> I, I, so, I, 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 that's a touchy topic for me because yep. I freaking hate those straws. Oh, God. Because there's nothing quite like a straw that implodes on itself before you're done drinking the thing. Have you ever you wanted to eat for, a sheet of you know, 8 by 11? Because here you go. Here you go. I get yeah, it. Yeah, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be. <laughs> And I, I know I guess I could walk around with a straw in my pocket like it's a pen or a, mm -hmm. you know, pocket, get a pocket protector for the, the metal straw that I have to carry like I'm a connoisseur. It's like, oh, what kind of drink is this? Uh, I think I'm going to use the uh, number three. <laughs> it's got the right diameter. Yeah, Good flow. exactly. Yeah. Don't, don't so. get brain freeze from sucking down the cocktail too fast. Um, I forgot what we were talking about. Oh, Apple. Yeah, so... <laughs> There was a guy who uh, on Twitter who kind of defended this by saying, hey, come on, we all must do the same thing. We leave the thing in the box anyway and don't use it because then when we go to resell it, you know, it will mm. be all new and everything. And it's like, yeah, I, that's actually not the way I do it. I mean, I I trade in my devices when I buy a new device. So if I buy an iPhone 12, I'll trade in the iPhone 11. And I can tell you, they don't want anything. They just want the phone. They, yeah. they give you a box to slip it into a little thing and they don't care about any of that stuff. Mm. So... Yeah, but I, I I can see from here. I have a b big plastic bags full of every uh, power brick cable combination yep. I've had from the past three or four years. So yeah, That's, I get it, but it doesn't mean I like it. Well, the reason so here's my problem with it. It's 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 actually tied to what I just said before. So the iPhone, the new iPhone, the latest iPhone, at least the Max or Pro, whatever it's called, Max version, comes with a bigger power supply. That's beneficial. You know, mm -hmm. if you have that phone and you're going to plug it into a wire, you you want to have that version of it because it yep. will charge it faster. Um, I thought uh, to me that seems like the right thing to do, um, mm -hmm. especially since these new devices will have. Um, fast charging capabilities and will benefit from a better power charger. It should come with a better charger. Yeah. I mean, you could make a case for leaving a cable out because we probably all have all tons of cables, but mm. the, that brick, that particular brick that they might put in there and aren't, I guess, uh, would be beneficial. Yeah. So they're, you're, you know, they're, they're raising the price of the iPhone by you know, yeah, 50 bucks. Something, something like that. 20, at yeah. least 20 or whatever, you know, they're, the price is going up or if it, I don't want to say artificially because it is, but it is artificial. I mean, because you won't see it when you swipe your credit card, but you'll see it when you open the box. Well, it's like companies often use the phrase and we pass the savings along to you. 
<laughs> that pass that does that result. that's never been muttered at apple <laughs> you know it's that's the it's the opposite of that yeah, yeah apple's I, saying as we pass the the margins on to the shareholders yeah right right oh well anyway yeah it's a thing it's yeah. funny as you were talking to uh, the, as you first brought this topic up you know it's like the the company that loves to take things away from us you could have been talking about microsoft there you could have been talking oh. about google uh you know, these companies are all uh, kind of classic in that way when you think about yeah. it. They all hurt us in different ways. Some emotionally, some sort of physically, depending on, <laughs> <laughs> well, depending on what Microsoft Legal is up to. You know, they bring the lead pipe. Sometimes they bring the foam noodle. It just depends. It just, That's right. It just depends. I, I, yeah. I, many years ago, described our relationship with Microsoft as an abusive one. I mean, why do we keep going back? <laughs> you know? Because they've got the best mac and cheese in town. That's why. This time it's going to be different. Yeah. 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 This time I won't get salmonella. So um, anyways, the other thing too, and according to people who actually receive these kits, uh, it made it exactly 10 minutes from when they arrived to when the benchmarks hit the internet. Supposedly, Apple said, hey, please don't benchmark these things publicly. And uh, absolutely nobody listened to that. Every, of course, everyone's going to benchmark yeah. So well, here's the thing. This is actually a huge conversation, and I only wrote part of it in that story. Mm -hmm. um, the part that I wrote, which, which you know, because look, I, everyone's uh, there. Are a lot of complaints. Is this apples to oranges? Is it blah blah blah? Whatever. Okay, guys, come on. Obviously, we have to discuss this. Right? Mm -hmm. There are many steps along the road where we're going to compare these things. I mean, this is the first one. So, uh, the issue for Qualcomm slash Microsoft slash Windows 10 on ARM, you know, whatever is. Geekbench runs natively on that platform, mm -hmm. and Geekbench runs emulated on the Apple Silicon. So the Apple Silicon is a little faster, about the same, depending on how you look at it, or depending on single core, multi core, whatever. Um, but it's running emulated, so that suggests that the real world performance of the native code is going to be dramatically faster. Okay. However, one of the things I have brought up a lot in the past is that benchmarks don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason this is interesting is because it literally is an apples to apples comparison. It's Geekbench versus Geekbench. It's all, you know, so yep. you could make the argument that the Apple Silicon is optimized for Geekbench, which, by the way, is has been one of my big theories for a long time now. So when people talk about uh, how much faster or not, you know, the iPhone chip is than the Android chip, mm -hmm. I, all I can do is fall back on the fact that I test several Android devices every year. And with the exception of the Google Pixel 3a, which was running low end hardware. I have never once, and I and by I, you know this, I buy an iPhone every year. I have never once thought to myself, "My God, this iPhone runs blazingly fast." Well, my Android phones do not. I, I've ne that is not the case. So here's the thing. I feel that Apple games the system by optimizing the chipsets for Geekbench or whatever benchmarks. I I really, I really do. It, I I don't have an opinion about whether they are really faster or not. I, there's no way to know. Because you can't run Android on A series and you can't run mm -hmm. iOS on Qualcomm. So there's no way to know. The reason, one of the reasons this Windows 10 and ARM thing versus Mac OS is so fascinating is because these things are both legacy operating systems and this is, is it's it's going to be interesting. Um, and, and, you know, will Apple still game the system? Maybe, but we can use those things. And, and it's the real world thing that to me is going to be interesting. Battery life, performance, all yep. of it. So we'll see. I mean, again, this is just step one of five or ten or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's it's still interesting. Don't don't discount it, but don't get sucked into it either. Yeah. I mean, uh, not. I would say it is not surprising to me that this was the result. Oh, no, I don't think anybody was really you know? surprised. Also, I think it, it is worth pointing out the Surface Pro X CPU is it based off the eight forty five. Like it's I not, it's not so exactly. So it's not HC, you don't think it's 8CX? Well, no, no, it is 8CX, but the 8CX is a derivative of. Oh, I see. Oh, you so know, you think it, it might even be a couple of gens behind or something? I think it's at least one. It's definitely not based off of 865. We know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's somewhere. Um, but it's just more to the point of these. But then you can make the same argument on Apple's side is that their A series chip that they put in here isn't exactly the newest one either. It's one based off of last year. So. Right. And actually, since we're going to go down this path, let's also mention the fact that one thing, and we've talked about this, you know, Microsoft Qualcomm learned, they put an 835 in a, 
uh, a TC and it went ho- it went horribly wrong. You put I think the next one was an 850. It's terrible. Qualcomm, Microsoft together or apart, whatever it was, decided we need to customize these chips yep. to the needs of the PC platform. And the result is today we have an 8CX on the Qualcomm side and Microsoft has its own custom chipset. You lose a lot of you lose stuff when you do this. You lose battery life, right? But they, you know, the, they mm-hmm. want the performance to be acceptable. On the Apple side, what we're seeing is literally the exact same chip that was used is used today in an iPad Pro, running Mac OS. I, I, that alone is astonishing. Like it's you know this is in no way potentially indicative of the type of performance we're going to see on the chips that they will now customize like Microsoft and Qualcomm have already done. So I'm just saying, I, you know, there's a lot of ways you can, you, you view it through your whatever colored lens you have, but I, I you can only come to the conclusion that this is not good news <laughs> for yeah. unless you're an fan. So I did, I looked it up real quick while you were um, babbling. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that the 8CX I believe is based off of the 855. 855. And yes. so the current gen is 865, is that yes. right? Okay, so the, uh, so the it's sort a, of... a gen behind, at least uh, one, I should say. I mean, remember these things. When did the A sixty five come out? Well, they always announce them in December, but the first phones don't come out until usually like the spring. It's usually what like a Samsung. But I mean, eight sixty five is this year's chip. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, I mean that means that at the time the Surface Pro X shipped, the eight fifty five was current, and. Yeah, it was that. Just, it was pretty. It was close like, to the I, end of its life cycle, but whatever. It's just important to keep in mind that Service Pro X is not based off of the eight sixty five for anybody who's thinking it is. It's not. It's last year's. But again, that kind of puts it again in line see, with Apple's because Apple's is last year's. Whatever. Also, you know, we don't like. I mean, I'm, I'm not a chipset expert for sure. Um, Microsoft slash Qualcomm have uh, customized these things. Mm-hmm. Continue to customize them. At some point, they stopped. They stop being analogous to whatever they started off as, right? And yep. maybe that's true today. I, I mean, I have no idea. This will be true on the Apple side too. Oh, the other thing is, by the way, uh, the the Apple thing, the Apple Silicon device, has big uh, cores and small cores. This is only using half of the cores. <laughs> this is only mm-hmm. the big cores. Um, and, and you know, I guess for performance benchmark, maybe that doesn't matter. I mean, uh, too too much. But I did, that's kind of interesting in and of itself. I mean, it's not a portable device, so the the times when the little cores would kick in and benefit the efficiency of the device maybe aren't as important. Um, it's a prototype, you know, whatever. But yeah, so I th- I, look, I'm sorry. It's just, yep. just it's just it's bad. It's, it's just you know, again, you can approach it from different angles, but you can't justify it enough to, to, to for anyone to claim that. Everything's okay because everything's not okay. Yeah, just kind of. Uh, here's another good analogy. See, it's like I've got the big cores, you've got the little cores. <laughs> People who aren't watching the video are going to be very confused about. What yeah, happened, it's but. okay. Brad's. Yeah. <laughs> so those were the big sort of things that popped up. Um, by the time this goes live, I'll have a post up on the site about Lockhart. Just some few anecdotal things. Paul, did you it, know it this thing to death? I, I, it's yeah. like we, we just are we just living in your fantasy world now? Is that what this well, is? Maybe, but here's here's sort of the interesting thing. So, is this yeah. a brilliant marketing move by Microsoft? Let me put let me put it in this perspective because they've already announced the most powerful console that we're ever going to see this generation. Sony has already announced their console, and right now everybody's like fascinated with this lower end unannounced console like it's getting like significant amount of press and it's going to be la- it's gonna, it's not going to be as good as what has already been announced i i don't know where to fall on this one because uh you know uh, i think today one plus is going to announce a low-end phone mm-hmm. you know went a little too high end with their most recent set of phones uh and that makes things expensive and but the phone market and the video game market are a little different i we have talked about this notion that having two tiers and different capabilities but they run the same games is not necessarily bad it's it seems good to me but on the other hand you know sony came out of the gate with um two identical consoles from mm. a platform perspective one of them doesn't have a disk drive it's a different way of going to market it's not a bad way i mean the fact that microsoft is probably going to announce a compromised experience but for less money 
is interesting, and I think it was informed by the fact that one of the reasons they lost big with this current generation of consoles is they came to market too expensive. Mm -hmm. This time, they were so burned by that. I mean, so horribly burned. I think they feel like they have to have something affordable as well, and yep. that it can't be the next gen, I'm sorry, the previous gen device, I guess. And I don't, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 it makes sense to some degree, but I don't know which one's the right approach. Yeah, so part of me is like optimistic about this to the point you just brought up, right? Lower price, good games, and all that good stuff. The the, the thing we don't know yet is, and this and this is what's going to make me nervous, and it's going to make you nervous too, is if they can get the marketing messaging right on this, it's perfect, right? You say, here's a console, 60 frames per second, 1080p ray tracing, brilliant for whatever, 399, pick your number. Here's a, here's a console, 4K, 60 frames per second, ray tracing. That's all they got to do. That's all they got to do. They don't have to talk about RAM. They don't have to talk about clock speeds. They don't have to talk about GPU. They don't have to talk about any of that. All they have to talk about is what sort of fidelity you're going to get on the screen. And if they just stick to that, the messaging becomes better. But if they get up there and they're going to say, oh, it has half the RAM, the CPU is the same, but the GPU has lower clock speed. It's, it's a huge asterisk to everything you just said. And even on the best end system with the best case scenario, they still have to say, well, in most cases, you know, I mean, there's some, you know, they can't even come out and be that. They precise. could, though. I, well, they should. I, yeah. Yes, I agree. So it, it's going to come down to their me messaging and how they position it, um, yeah. which, as we all know, has historically been an Achilles heel of Microsoft. But uh, maybe maybe, maybe this time they'll get it. So it's, it's an abusive relationship, but maybe this time they mean to be nice to it. Yeah, I know nothing about abusive relationships. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Really? <laughs>